Hi there and welcome to today's tutorial helping you out on how to do product photography for people at home with their phone. So this is actually part two, uh, part one I will link below. Uh, this one is actually a few tips on how to actually use your phone because the problem is a lot of people seem to think you need to buy an advanced camera to get high quality images. But as long as you have your phone, your settings and equipment sorted out and a bit of knowledge, you'll be ready to go. So, I mean, the phone does need to be relatively new. So the iPhone 7 and up, the Samsung 7 and up, the newer Google Pixel 2 and some of the other ones, you know, just a relatively new phone is going to have a camera good enough for you to get high quality images people are going to look at and want to or hopefully want to buy your stuff when they see your images online so starting off with your settings um, you can actually go into your advanced controls and select full manual um, you may or may not want to do this uh, if you're in a darker environment you might want to go in there and increase your brightness settings and play with the ISO settings. But the darker it is, the higher you'll need your ISO settings, which decreases the quality. So, you know, go back to lesson one, what I've linked, look about look at how to set up your lighting, and then you can optimize your settings here to have the ISO as low as possible. Uh, also, go into the grid settings. Um, it's always good to have the product central. But there is the law of thirds you might have heard about where it's more aesthetic to have an item on the right or the left. But in product photography, central with a white background is what's going to focus the eye on the product, which is what you want here. There's also some apps that can help you out, which will replace the background with a clear white um, and other optimizations. I've done another video on this, so I'll link that as well to uh, stay concise here. And moving on to the equipment, so you need either a mini tripod or a large tripod. Now this is because you want stability. Now the stability is really going to help you here in combination with a wireless remote. Now using a wireless remote is going to stop you from pressing the button yourself which can cause a bit of shake. So, you know, the tripod with the wireless remote is going to give you a nice stable image and save you time editing later on, editing out the issues. Uh, you want to take as many photos as possible anyway and choose the best of those to get the best results. But, you know, every little helps here. You can also buy some speciality lenses for mobile phones. Um, it's a Google search your way. But I mean, for some of the newer ones, I don't really think it's worth it. Although they do up your game. So, I mean, have a look, decide for yourself. But I'd say don't bother at first unless you start selling more and more, which at that point you may as well just upgrade to a professional camera. So, moving on to a bit of knowledge you might want to apply. And so this is just a brief overview to help you out. I don't want to go on for a long time. So, composition is how you lay everything out. So, if you're taking a picture of your art, for example, the composition will be having some pencils or some paintbrushes laid on the side, just to give a bit of insight into the creative process behind what, you, uh, what you've done. But that, that will be for the supporting images. The primary image wants to be just a central image of the product on a white background. And as I say, with these secondary images, supporting images, uh, look into colour combinations and colour psychology. Uh, Wikipedia have good articles on this. But basically, certain colours look good in combination with others. And colour psychology is, is along the lines of blues will give a calming effect and a professional effect, whereas reds give a more fiery effect you know it's quite obvious things if you think about it but you know think about incorporating these things into photography i go a lot more in depth on my blog but as i say look at the wikipedia articles and decide for yourself what you want to do also play with different angles uh, because people you want to replicate the sense of touch because if someone's shopping in person they're going to pick the item up 
feel it, look at it from different angles. So your texture shots are really important, especially for clothing and anything involving cloth. So getting right up close from a 45, 90 degree angle so you can see the threading will really help you there. And that's all for today's brief overview, the second lesson of the few I'm going to be doing. Uh, let me know if it's been helpful and cheers for watching. Subscribe and like for more to come. Cheers and bye.